now let's see about data transfer instructions data transfer instructions are useful to transfer the data from one location to another location without changing its content so mainly by using data transfer instructions we can transfer the data between uh, different memory locations that means we can transfer the data between one memory location to another memory location or we can transfer the data between uh, registers or we can transfer the data from memory to register or from register to the memory or we can transfer the data between registers and input output devices uh, let's see the different types of data transfer instructions the first column represents name the second column represents mnemonic mnemonic means how we can represent that instruction mnemonic means symbol the first instruction is load represented by ld in uppercase letters the second instruction is store represented by st in uppercase letters next instruction move represented by mov next one exchange represented by xeh next one input represented by in next output represented by out next to push represented by push in uppercase letters next to pop represented by pop in uppercase letters first let's see the first one load load is represented with the symbol ld load is mainly useful in order to load the memory vote into the processor register such as accumulator so by using load mainly we can transfer uh, memory vote that is operand into accumulator if we want we can transfer we can load memory vote to some other register also let's take an example so load 10 so whenever the statement is executed then the memory word 10 will be loaded into accumulator or if we written a statement like this load r1 comma 10 so whenever this statement is executed then the operand or the memory word 10 will be loaded into processor register r1 so load allows us to load the memory word or operand into any processor register but mainly we use just load in order to load memory word into accumulator and the next one is store store is mainly useful in order to store the content of the accumulator into a processor register uh, let's take an example st so store is represented by st uh, let us assume that we have written a memory location like this so st x so whenever that statement is executed then what will happen is the content of the accumulator will be stored in the memory location x so if no other uh, source register is specified then accumulator content will be stored into memory or if you specify like this r2 then st store instruction stores the content of r2 into the memory location x so here the point is store instruction is mainly useful in order to store the content of processor register or the content of the accumulator into memory okay uh, let's see the next instruction move instruction move is useful in order to transfer data from one register to another register so move r1 comma r2 so whenever the statement is executed then the content of r2 will be moved to r1 or by using move we can transfer the data from register to the memory so the content of r2 will be moved to x so likewise by using move instruction we can move the content between registers we can move the content between memory locations or we can move the content between register and memory location like that so if we execute a statement like this then the content at memory the content at location y will be moved to x like that okay now let's see the next one exchange instruction exchange instruction is denoted by xeh it is useful in order to exchange the content at two memory locations or we can exchange the content between two registers or we can exchange the content between processor register and memory location like that so we have written a statement like this xhg r1 comma r2 then what will happen the content of r1 and r2 will be exchanged let initially r1 content is 10 r2 content is 20 so after exchange what will happen the content of r1 will become 20 the content of r2 will become 10 like that 
now let's see the next one input instruction we know that uh, the the most commonly used input device is keyboard so input instructions are useful to provide input information to the processor register okay uh, so by using input uh, by using input instruction the input information will be provided to the processor register now let's see about output instruction out the most commonly used output instruction is the most commonly used output device is monitor or uh, some printer by using output instruction we can get the data from the monitor we can get the data from the printer so out output instruction is mainly useful in order to retrieve the data from output devices and the next one is push instruction push instruction is useful to push the contents of the information onto the stack generally the contents of the information will be available either in memory or processor register so push information is useful to transfer the data between processor register and stack or between between memory location and stack so the content may reside either in processor register or memory so that content will be pushed on to the stack whereas pop instruction is useful in order to pop the contents of the memory or in order to pop the contents of the i'm sorry pop instruction is mainly useful in order to pop the stack that uh, popped content will be stored either in processor register or will be stored in some memory so pop and push instructions are useful in order to transfer the data between processor register and stack or to transfer the data between memory and stack so likewise we use as pop instruction is also for to transfer the data between memory and the stack or to transfer the data between processor register and the stack okay and uh, now let's see eight addressing modes for the load instruction so here we have taken the first instruction and let's see how we can represent that load instruction with the help of these addressing modes so if you want to get the perfect idea about this these addressing modes it is better to refer my previous video that is addressing modes so the first one is direct addressing mode we know what is direct addressing mode direct addressing mode means the instruction contains address that address contains the operand so it is represented in the assembly convention is ldadr so that address will be loaded so in the register transfer statement it is represented as let it be some memory okay so let the address here is 100 whereas the operand here is 10 so m of adr here adr specifies address so what is adr 100 so now m of 100 means 10 so 10 will be loaded into the accumulator so that is nothing but direct address direct address means instruction contains the address let it be the instruction let it be the instruction let the address here is 1000 what is the address here let the address here is 1000 so instruction contains the address that address contains the operand okay so load adr so what is adr 1000 so what is m of i'm sorry 100 so what is m of 110 so 10 will become the accumulator so we can represent load instruction in with direct addressing mode like this if you take indirect address then how we can represent if it is an indirect address then we can use as at the rate at the rate represents it is indirect address so here the mnemonic is ld at the rate adr so we know what is indirect address indirect address means uh, that address field contains effective address so we have to go to the effective address in order to know what is the operand here what is the address field 100 okay let it be some 1000 okay so here what is the address field here 100 so we have to go to 100 location in order to know what is the effective address so what is the effective address 1000 so we have to go to 1000 location in order to know what is the operand so here the statement is m of m of adr so what is adr 100 is adr m of 100 means what 1000 so this 1000 will becomes the effective address okay then we have to go to that 1000 so m of 1000 means 10 so that 10 will be loaded into the accumulator now let's see about uh, relative address relative address means we use as dollar so dollar represents relative address we know what is relative address we have to add program counter to address field in order to know what is the effective address 
let the program counter here is some uh, 51 so this 51 is added to address field in order to get what is the effective address so what is 51 plus 100 151 so we have to go to 151 that 151 contains the operand so let's see about relative address so m of pc plus adr so program counter is added to this address field uh, so it will gives the effective address so we have to go to that location in order to know what is the operand now let's see about immediate address so we know what is immediate address immediate address means the instruction itself contains the operand the instruction doesn't contains any address so now if it is an immediate instruction this address will become the operand so 100 will become the operand so that is nothing but a number here we don't have any address so that's why we are using nbr nbr specifies number so hash represents it is an immediate address so here nbr arrow ac so that means that number will be loaded into the accumulator so what is that that number here 100 so 100 will becomes the accumulator and the next one is indexed address indexed address means we have to add the contents of index register to the address field in order to know the effective address here x specifies index register adr of x specifies address of the index register so that address that address what is xr xr means index register so the content of the index register is added to the address field it will gives the effective address okay so if you want to know the operand then we have to use m m specifies the memory word at this address so that will be loaded into the accumulator now let's see about uh, register addressing mode uh, register addressing mode means uh, the content of the register will becomes the accumulator so we can represent it as like this ld r1 so now the content of r1 will become the accumulator let r1 contains 100 okay so 100 will becomes the content of the accumulator in register transfer statement we can write as acro r1 so what is r1 here 100 so that 100 will be loaded into the accumulator now let's see about register indirect addressing mode register indirect addressing mode means that register contains effective address so we have to go to this address in order to know the operand that operand will be loaded into the accumulator register indirect addressing mode is represented with the help of parenthesis so ld within the parenthesis r1 it represents this is register indirect addressing mode instruction whereas in register transfer statement we can write as m of r1 so what is r1 here 100 so we have to go to this 100 in order to know the operand so now this 100 will becomes the effective address in 100 we have 1000 so this 1000 will becomes the content of the accumulator so this 1000 will be loaded to into the accumulator next we have uh, uh, auto increment addressing mode auto increment addressing mode is also similar to register indirect addressing mode but it follows post increment approach we know what is post increment approach after accessing the content the register will be incremented by one so it is represented as ld within the parenthesis r1 plus plus this plus specifies auto increment okay so ac arrow m of r1 after accessing the content we have to increment that r1 by 1 so likewise we can represent uh, auto decrement also okay so this is about uh, data transfer instructions so these are nothing but addressing modes and this is nothing but assembly convention if it is at the rate then it is indirect address if it is dollar then relative instruction if it is hash immediate if it is x then indexed like that we can represent uh, here m specifies memory word so memory word at that address okay so this is about data transfer instructions